Welcome to my tutorial video for the annual and monthly budget spreadsheet for Google Sheets and Excel. To get started, I recommend reading the easy-to-follow instructions that will guide you through the workbook. At the top of this tab, you'll find a direct link to my website where I share further resources, helpful guides, and links to my other spreadsheet tools. If you need assistance at any time, simply scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Contact Us button. This will connect you directly with me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can to help answer any questions. One quick note as you begin, it is important not to edit colored cells in the spreadsheet. They often contain critical formulas that help automate the spreadsheet. If you accidentally edit a protected cell, you will get a heads up warning message. Click Cancel to prevent errors. You can use this quick links menu to skip ahead to any section of the instructions. The name of the section contains a link to the tab in the workbook. Clicking on recurring will take me directly to the recurring tab. To go back to the top, simply click on the link in the up button. Head to the setup tab by using the link or by clicking the tab at the bottom. On the left side of every tab, you'll see a collapsible menu for quick navigation. If it's not open, just click the plus sign to expand it. Inside, you'll find links to all the different tabs, making it easy to move around your spreadsheet without scrolling. To get started with the setup, select your country from this drop-down list. This will update the currency symbols throughout the workbook. Then, select the month and year on which you would like to start. Enter all the categories you'll need under Income, Expenses, Bills, Debt, and Savings. I've included a few examples for you, but you can edit or replace them with your own. Next, the Projected Amounts columns. The numbers you enter here will automatically transfer to every month in your budget. If your budget changes from month to month, you can go into the Monthly tabs and replace the formula with your own number for that month. If you'd like to use the 50-30-20 feature, select Need or Want from the drop-down list beside each category. For example, groceries would be marked as a need, while restaurants would be marked as a want. Now, enter your starting balances for debt and savings at the beginning of your budgeting period. After that, list all of your bank accounts, their starting balances, and any cash on hand. If you want these balances to carry into your first month's rollover, check the box beside each account. Finally, if you're budgeting as a couple, you can add two people for couples budgeting. If you want to use the zero-based budgeting method with no rollover and where all of your months start at zero, uncheck this box. Now that we are done with the setup, let's head to the Recurring tab. The Recurring Transactions tab is here to save you time and make your budget more accurate. Instead of typing the same bills or income over and over each month, you can enter them once and they'll automatically appear throughout your budget. In the Recurring Transactions table, you'll start by entering the start date and, if needed, an end date. Then add the amount, choose the category, and set how often it repeats using the Frequency column. You can also select which account it comes from, assign it to a person if you're budgeting as a couple, and check the box if it's a subscription. When you mark it as a subscription, it will automatically be added to your subscription tracker. Next is the Calendar tab. This calendar updates automatically based on the entries you've set up in the Recurring tab. At the top, you can select the month and year you want to view. Everything is color-coded and organized by income, bills, debts, and savings, so it's easy to see what's coming up. At the end of each week, you'll find a weekly total, which gives you a clear picture of your finances on a week-by-week -week basis. 
In the monthly tabs, if you scroll to the recurring table, you can mark your recurring bills as paid. Once you do that, the calendar will update automatically, and those expenses will appear crossed out with a strike-through line. The next tab is the dashboard. You can come here anytime to get an overview of your entire year. All of your annual stats are displayed in one place, so you can quickly see the big picture of your finances. The upcoming table shows your upcoming payments. If a payment is missed or hasn't been marked as paid, it will appear in red as a reminder. It's a good idea to check this table regularly to make sure all of your payments are completed on time. The next section is the monthly tabs. This is where you'll enter your information for each month. The projected columns are for the amounts you set up earlier in the setup tab. If your payments change, you can replace the formula with your updated numbers. If you ever want to recover a formula that you have removed, you can simply copy the formula from another cell in the same column and paste it back. A faster way to do this is to select a cell with an intact formula, click on the small dot at the bottom right, and drag it up or down. The actual columns update automatically based on the information you enter in the transaction tracker, which is located on the right side of the tab. When adding a transaction, be sure to include the date. If it's income, enter the amount in the in column, and if it's an expense, enter it in the out column. Note that all transactions are entered as positives. You do not need to enter the out transactions as negative. Then select the category for your income or expense. You can start typing the first few letters and it will fill in automatically, so you don't always need to use the drop-down menu. After that, the next selections are optional and can be left blank without affecting the spreadsheet. You can choose the account, the person who made the transaction if you are using couples budgeting, and add a short description if you want. As you enter your transactions, you can scroll back to the left to view the charts and keep track of your cash flow summary. The actual columns will update automatically, and you can compare them to your projected amounts using the difference column to see how closely you're sticking to your budget. In the bills table, you'll notice that the recurring transactions don't automatically appear in the actual column. To update them, scroll to the right and mark each one as paid. Once you do that, the actual column will update automatically. If you want to check all the boxes at once to save time, click the first checkbox, then hold the shift key and click the last one. Press the spacebar to check them all at the same time. At the far right of the spreadsheet, you'll find the expense breakdown table. This section gives you a clear summary of where your money is going each month. If any of your recurring transactions change, like the date, the amount, the account, or the person, you can update it by entering the new information in the row beside the original transaction. Now, go to the account tracker by using the link in the menu at the left. The account tracker tab is an optional feature and should be used only if you want to track accounts. The main table is fully automated based on your entries in the setup tab. In the table on the right, you can make adjustments to your accounts such as transfers, interest, or balance corrections by filling out the columns provided. Debt payments can be a little confusing when using the account tracker so here's the easiest way to handle them. If you are making a payment to reduce your debt such as a credit card or a loan, record it in the transaction tracker inside the monthly tab. Enter the amount under out, choose the debt category, and select the account you use to pay it. If you also use your credit card for everyday spending, any extra money you send to it should be added in the transfers table on the account tracker tab. Enter the date, amount, and select transfer. Then choose where the money is coming from and where it is going, and just a quick note, recurring transactions for debt are only for payments that actually reduce your debt, not for cards or accounts you use for daily purchases. 
The 50-30-20 tab is an optional feature designed to help you maintain balance in your budget. Many people like using the 50-30-20 budgeting rule because it's simple, flexible, and easy to follow. It helps you see exactly where your money is going, balance responsibilities and enjoyment, and stay consistent with your savings goals month after month. In this tab, your expenses are divided into three categories, needs, wants, and savings. Needs are essentials like rent, groceries, and utilities. Wants include things like dining out or entertainment. Savings cover your goals such as debt payments, emergency funds, and investments. At the top, select the month you want to view. You can also change the ratios based on your personal goals. Some people prefer to save more than 20% or spend less on wants, so you can adjust it to fit your lifestyle. The breakdown tab lets you view a detailed comparison of income and expenses for both people in couples budgeting. At the top, select the month you want to view. This tab helps you see how each person contributes to income and spending, making it easier to maintain balance and track shared financial goals. Go to the Savings Planner tab. The Savings Planner is a dedicated tool for setting and tracking multiple savings goals, such as building an emergency fund, saving for a vacation, or planning for a large purchase. You can define a target amount for each goal, and the spreadsheet automatically calculates how much you've saved so far and how much remains. With options to log your contributions, you'll see your progress and estimated completion date for each goal, helping you stay organized and motivated. Start by entering all the things you want to save for. Add the name of the goal, start date, goal date, and savings target. In the tables at the bottom, enter the dates when you'd like to make contributions and the amounts you plan to contribute on those dates. If you want to make equal contributions, look at the month's left cell to see how many payments you have remaining. Then use the recommended contribution shown on line 35 as the suggested amount for each month. When you make a payment, click the checkbox in the bottom table and that contribution will be added to saved so far. It will also update the remaining and percentage saved cells automatically. The Savings Planner gives you a clear visual of your progress, making it easier to stay on track and achieve your financial goals over time. Go to the Subscription Tracker tab. This tab is mostly automated based on your entries in the Recurring tab and the subscription checkbox you selected there. You can sort your subscriptions by category using the drop-down menu, and these categories can be customized in the breakdown table. The subscription tracker is a great tool to keep an eye on all your active subscriptions, helping you see how much you spend each month and making it easy to spot any you no longer use or want to cancel. Finally, go to the Net Worth Tracker tab. Here, you can get a complete picture of your overall financial health. Enter all of your assets, divided into two main categories, savings and investments, and properties and other assets. Then, list all of your liabilities, such as loans, credit card balances, or other debts. I've included a few examples to help you get started. As you enter your information, the spreadsheet will automatically calculate your total assets, total liabilities, and your current net worth, giving you a clear view of your financial progress over time. Thank you for joining me. I hope this walkthrough helped you feel confident using your annual and monthly budget spreadsheet. Take your time exploring each tab, and remember that everything is designed to make budgeting easier, more organized, and stress-free. Wishing you success as you track your progress and reach your financial goals.